Good morning, folks. We've got weather records. Zarkova betraying the GSM community again with mistakes, a dark matter alternative, and some Nova events. But we begin, as always, at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on our star with no sunspots, polar confined coronal holes. There is sunspot potential in the central disk, and we'll be watching there today. Moving on to the solar wind, where another phi angle interaction last night, the cut down in blue top right, means that with even pitifully weak solar wind physical parameters, the magnetic character of the stream, shifting, was enough to cause minor instability in the magnetic field. We'll be watching the solar wind today as well. Well, folks, a few hours after this article came out, started snowing in central Colorado again. Records in jeopardy and continuing to fall in other places on seasonal, monthly, and individual storm scales. Of course, they have record heat in the forecast in Tampa today, and that seems like an appropriate swing of extremes for modern-day Earth, doesn't it? Farmers getting an upgraded look at how the weather is affecting their crops with Landsat. The now decades of data on different crops and weather corollaries now allows them to have impeccable bird's eye view of the fields and compare to surrounding regions, like having your defensive coordinator up in the play booth so they can see the whole field at once. We've also got a video info piece on the James Webb Space Telescope, the telescope they hope to launch sometime before the year 3000. Kidding aside on their 6 million delays thus far, the concept and setup is so incredible with how it will survey the entire sky from the L2 position every year. Heat shield, cold side, can't wait till they actually get this thing up there. We're off to the sun science. Something certainly seemed off when Zarkova began emailing me in 2014 and 2015 with questions about long-term solar cycles. She had an obsession with the Maunder minimum, when Sporer was lower and longer just before it. There was a failure to understand the solar polar magnetic field predictive power of the solar cycle. And after telling many of you that Grand Solar Minimum was on our doorstep, earlier this year she pushed it back to the year 3700, with warming lasting another 500 years. She's back now, saying the same stuff again, still focused on Maunder as the low point still ignoring solar polar magnetic fields, still basing it on irradiance only, no particle forcing, and on the gravitational orbital changes to the planet. One easy way you can see some of the mistakes in the model is to see where they identify the Maunder point as the low point in the magnetic model. It should definitely be Sporer a few hundred years earlier. And where's the modern grand maximum of the 1900s, the largest solar activity in thousands of years? A very legit question, especially since they clearly identify that super grand maximum in a different chart in the very same paper. Something tells me there's a reason they haven't submitted this one to a journal yet. Moving on to an interesting plasma cosmology idea. Here we do not require dark matter, as you might expect at this channel, but we do require a dark energy pervading the universe like an ether or the force, allowing for the interconnection of everything. Just one caveat. As this general concept came into popularity in the 1920s and 1930s, it did fail to explain a few variations in the expected observations. Now while the world went with dark matter instead, nobody until now decided to ask if perhaps it wasn't isotropic but an isotropic space, and if that's the case, you don't need dark matter. FYI, isotropic is when things look and present the same from any angle, like a grain of salt. Wood, however, is anisotropic since the wood grain determines appearance and strength of the wood, and it's different from different angles. If indeed that second one is the cosmos, a fascinating concept, then we have another way to dispense with the imaginary dark matter particles. Last but not least, we're looking at nova events, recurring nova events. Unlike supernova, which tend to destroy the star, most nova are not as big and in fact do not destroy the star. We have a number of examples of nova events leaving stellar remnants in the middle to potentially boom again. And folks, while the official recurrent nova list is only about 12 or 13 long, they say that's because most are likely on centuries to millennial scales of cycle, and potentially all nova are recurring until they eventually destroy the star. Of course, 
Seeing these nova blasts and a star still sitting in the middle takes us back to the catastrophe cycle. Folks, there is a preposterous amount of evidence that the sun is an ultra-long period recurrent micronova star, somewhere between those nova we just saw and the tiny dwarf nova or pulsar x-ray burst releases. But it's still a nova. It explains the rapid ice age onset and snow deposition. How do you get enough heat to evaporate all that water and then immediately switch it to cold to freeze? Nova flash and then the dust blocks out the sun for weeks. How do we keep having evidence of magnetic excursions with these rapid ice onsets, the electric field of the solar flash? We actually made a movie about this. It's called Cosmic Disaster, and that full movie and 44 episode extended playlist is linked below this video for you. It's related to that magnetic excursion, as we said, and our work with Doug Vogt, August Dunning, Robert Felix, and Randall Carlson, who I was talking to on the phone yesterday. He wishes to say hello to everyone. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. And of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.